Hello and welcome, in this video we're going to be looking at how to set up a production grade MySQL server. Of course there's many things to cover when your application scales bigger, but really most of us just need a small to medium solution in order to deploy a website or app. During the video we're going to be buying a server from a cloud provider, securing the SSH access, setting up a fail to ban service, setting up a firewall and installing MySQL server with some specific configurations for it to work better in production mode. Before we start though, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make sure I answer that for you. Also, I've been building for the past weeks the docs.com, which is a documentation tool for your projects and APIs, and I'm sharing everything about it in my Twitter account at Eli Lopez Dev. So go ahead and check that out as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is gonna be renting a reliable server. In my case, I always use Linode as my cloud provider. I've never really had any problems with it, and I think prices are pretty good as well. If you're interested, I'm gonna leave you a referral link in the description that is gonna give you a $100 credit. And it also helps me out a ton because these videos are basically for free and they take so much effort to make them well. Now, once we log in into the Linode account, we're gonna click on create Linode. You have all these options for operating systems. I'm just gonna pick a simple Ubuntu instance for $5 a month. Then select my region, in this case, Dallas, Texas. And I'm gonna set a password as well. There's also this option to create automatic backups for $2 a month, which I think is a pretty good option considering you can always go back to any of the past backups in case you have any problems. Then once it finishes provisioning your server, we're going to go ahead and log in into it. For that, we're going to use the SSH console. In this case, if you lose access for some reason to SSH, you can always use the Lish console from Linode to access your server. We're going to copy this and paste it into our console, then type in yes and insert the SSH password we set before. As you can see, we log in successfully with the root user. Now this can be insecure because the root user has access to everything and we need to restrict it by creating a new user with limited permissions. I'm going to create a new user called Eli and for this we type in the command add user space and then the name of the user in my case Eli. Then we add this user to the sudo group in order to be able to run admin commands using our password. Now we're gonna exit the server and we're gonna log back in, but this time using my new user, Eli. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is change the authentication method from password to SSH key. This is incredibly better because you won't need a password to access your server but only computers with this specific file will be able to access your server. So no robots on the internet are going to be able to hack your SSH access through the password. To do this, in my computer, in my case Windows, I'm going to run the command ssh-keygen-b4096. And this is going to generate uh, two files in my machine. One is going to be my public key and the other one is going to be the private key. But be careful, if you've already created a key before, this command will override it and you could potentially lose access to your other servers configured. To check if you've already have an SSH key, go to your user folder and then into the SSH folder and check for two files called idrsa and idrsa.pub. Now we need to send the public key to our server, but first we're going to create the folder to which we're going to copy this file to in our server. So let's log back into the server and run the command to create a folder and uh, set the corresponding permissions to it. Then we exit the server and run the command to copy the file from our computer 
to the remote server and uh, in my case on Windows that is gonna be SCP then the computer path to the file then the username at the IP of the server and then colon and the path on my server to copy the file to Then as you can see, if we try to log in back into the server, this time it's not gonna ask for any password. So that is the uh, SSH key configuration. Now in our server, I'm gonna edit the SSHD config file to modify some SSH configurations that come by default and we're gonna make them a little bit more secure. Starting by running this command to use nano to edit the file. Then we're gonna look for the port. By default, the port is gonna be 22 for SSH, and I'm gonna change it to 22343. Then we scroll down and look for the configuration called permit root login. We're gonna set this to no in order to prevent any login using the root user. Keep going down the file and look for password authentication. We're also gonna set this to no in my case. You can set this as Yes, but only if you need the password authentication because maybe you're logging in from different computers all the time. But otherwise, I would just recommend to leave it as no to access only using the SSH key that we configured before. And finally, we're going to look for address family right on top and we're going to change it from any to inet or inet6 if you're using ipv6 and we're in our case we we're, we're using ipv4 so we're gonna set it to inet only like this now to save the file hit ctrl x and then enter and we're gonna run this command to restart the sshd service in the server Now we're going to run sudo apt update to update all the system packages. And we're going to run sudo apt install fail to ban to install the fail to ban service, which is a service that is going to be running in the background, basically checking for any access tries. And if an IP address tries to access the server more than a couple times it is gonna ban the IP for a couple hours or minutes depending on how you configure it. Now we're gonna open the fail to ban configuration file using nano by running this command. We're gonna scroll down and look for the ban time that is uncommented. In this case it is set to 10 minutes. I'm gonna set it to 24 hours. And also we're going to look for the max red trees. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set it to three. Then we run sudo service fail to ban restart to restart the service and apply all these configurations. Now we're going to go ahead and set up a firewall. In this case, I'm going to use the firewall that comes in by default on Ubuntu. Uh, first command we're going to run is sudo UFW status to check the status. Uh, in this case, it's going to be inactive. Now we're going to run the command to allow all outgoing connections. Then we run the command to deny all incoming connections by default. And then we're going to add an exception to allow incoming connections from port 22343, which is the port we set for the SSH connection before. Finally, we're just going to run the command sudo ufw enable to enable the firewall. And as you can see, if we run the status command again, you're going to be able to see the rules we added. In this case, only the exception for port 22343. Then we're going to run sudo apt install mysql dash server. This is going to install the mysql server package. Then we run sudo mysql secure installation this is going to run a package that is going to allow us to configure 
MySQL in a more secure way by deleting some of the things that come in by default, like for example, test databases. We're gonna set yes and hit enter. And then we're gonna pick number two, which is a strong password. This is gonna help us uh, create a strong password for the MySQL server. And we're gonna type in the new password for the root user of MySQL. Once you type in the password twice, it's gonna give you a score for that password. If it's a high score, then press yes to continue with this password for the root user. Then we're gonna hit, hit yes to remove any anonymous users that come in by default and then hit yes again to remove access with the root user from any other host that is not local host. Then we hit yes to remove the test database and all the access to it. And finally, we're gonna hit yes to reload the privileges table and apply these changes. Now we've configured most of the MySQL server, but we're still gonna change some other things. For this, we go ahead and run this command to open the MySQL configuration file on nano. So we run sudo nano and the path for the config file. And in here, we're gonna look for the port configuration. As you can see, it is commented out. By default, it is 3306. We're gonna change this port to a completely different one. I'm gonna set it to 5321. I'm sorry, 5231. Then we're gonna scroll down until we see the bind address and we're gonna change this to 0.0.0.0 and that is gonna allow us to get connections from anywhere and not only from the local host. So we can have another server and um, connect to this one. Now with this done, we're gonna press Ctrl X and then enter to save the file. And we're gonna go ahead and restart the MySQL server by running this other command. Finally, we're gonna access uh, MySQL by running sudo MySQL. This is gonna give you access to the server using the root user. And we're gonna run the query to create a new user. For the host, we're gonna set a percentage sign, which means any, any server or any IP address can use this user to log in into MySQL, but you can also change specifically this to any IP and that way you can limit the IP address from which this can this user can be used. So for example, if I set the IP from my web server, only my web server will be able to access this MySQL server using that user. Then I'm gonna run this other query to grant privileges on all databases and on all tables so that I can access everything with this specific user. And finally, we run flush privileges and we exit the MySQL server. Now we need to make an exception in the firewall to allow connections to the MySQL port. And there's two ways to do this. You can allow incoming connections from any IP address like this. Or you can allow incoming connections to this port only from a specific IP address, which is what I would recommend. I'm gonna do it from any IP address just for, to demonstrate and to test the connection from my computer, but preferably use a specific IP address. Now you can test this out in something like MySQL Workbench, which is the one I'm using right now. Just go ahead and insert your host name, the port, the username, and the password we set as well. And as you can see, the MySQL server is running correctly. And that's it for this video. I'm gonna be doing another video on Docker to deploy a web server using Nginx. If you're interested in that video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.